Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and um, this tonight is my full review of the Kennerton Woden or maybe it's pronounced Wooden. I still don't know for sure but anyway um, I've had this headphone a couple months now and I'm about a month overdue with my full review but um, have to be honest with you, um, I've kind of neglected both my headphone group on Facebook and my YouTube channel the last month. Not deliberately, but uh, the fact is I uh, own and run a small lawn care business. And mid-April through May um, into June is my busiest time of the year. And I have just been so busy working lately. I've had very little time to put into headphones. And the truth is, I got to make the money while I can. And, um, you know, I got to keep my customers happy. So I've, um, the last couple weeks, every time I sit down to listen to a pair of headphones, I'm usually asleep by the first or second song. I, I don't think I've made it to the third song in, um, you know, weeks now I just I just come home I'm tired and um, sit down and try to do any listening and I'm sound asleep but it's what I do love about headphones they are relaxing so anyway I'm trying to get back in sync a little bit haven't done a video in a month now and um, kind of got to get back into it a bit uh, I did get a chance to listen to this headphone for um, well, I've listened to it for two months and a lot, I've put a lot of hours on this headphone because I really do like it. But um, last night I got a chance to put in probably three or four hours of comparing it to a few other headphones and, you know, brought, I wasn't, you know, it, my memories of the sound were kind of uh, a little bit foggy because it's been a while so I wanted to refresh my memory and um, Put some time in last night and feel pretty comfortable, you know, talking about this. And like I said, this is my full review, so I intend to go in deeper into the sound than in my first impressions. But I will go over the statistics and all that pretty quickly here, you know, and um, let you know uh, what this headphone's about and then try to talk about the sound a little bit in comparison to a few other headphones. So start out with, um, this is the Kennerton Woden, and um, it is made by Kennerton Audio Equipment, and they are out of St. Petersburg, Russia. This headphone currently sells for $2,479 US dollars. Um, I did see something on Kennerton's website about a 10% discount because of... Um, slow shipping right now because of the whole COVID-19 thing. I'm not sure if that discount is up front or if that's if, you know, your shipping's delayed or what it is. But anyway, $2,479 is the retail price on this. Um, anyway, it is a full-sized, wired, uh, over-the-ear, uh, open-back design, as you can see. Uh, uses an 80 millimeter planar magnetic driver. It has an impedance of 38 ohms. It has a sensitivity, according to Kennerton, of 106 decibels. And I do believe this is possibly the most efficient, easiest to drive planar magnetic headphone that, that I've reviewed so far. This thing is very easy to drive. And, I don't have a portable unit to try it with, but I know this um, does not take a lot of power to um, get pretty decent sound out of it. You know, and of course, a, a headphone on this level is going to scale up, you know, with a better amp. It's going to sound better, but as far as power requirements, it doesn't need a whole lot. Even a uh, little OTL tube amp does a very good job with this, and I'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Anyway, uh, the weight claimed by Kennerton is 480 grams, and this actually weighed in on my kitchen scale at 477 grams, three grams lighter than they claim, and it's one of the very few headphones that I've reviewed that actually comes in lighter than the claim of the manufacturer. Some have come in as much as 100 grams heavier. 
So anyway, um, it comes with a two meter detachable cable and um, these, it's a real nice material, soft and pretty flexible and it has four pin mini XLR connections at the headphone end and at the uh, amp end it has your standard quarter inch or 6.3 millimeter single ended connection. Um, Headphone itself, like you can see, um, it's a, actually a beautiful headphone in my opinion that is real wood. It is not a veneer and um, I'm not sure. I, I really like it but I'm not sure if I'm crazy about the wooden grill design. Um, I guess what it kind of reminds me of for some reason. Remember back in the first Matrix movie, uh, early in the movie when, what's his name, uh, Neo's he was still Neil Anderson or something. Uh, I don't remember. No, not Neil. Um, Mr. Anderson. That's all I remember. He was being interrogated and he said something about wanting his phone call and uh, the agent says, well, how are you going to make a phone call if you're unable to speak? And when he opened his mouth, it kind of um, it was like grown together. Anyway, for some reason when I see this, it kind of reminds me of that. But um, anyway, but it is a beautiful design. The wood cups are carved out of one solid chunk of curly maple. And um, the headband is a steel, flexible steel design. It has a self-adjusting strap. And the ear pads are made of real lambskin leather. Very, very soft, and so is the padding on the um, headband. And the ear pads are quite thick, and they angle, as you can see, thinner in the front, wider in the back, which uh, angles the cups forward just a little bit, gives you, I think, uh, more depth to the sound stage. But anyway, um, these are, in my opinion, very comfortable. The, the clamping force is very light, but yet they don't move around. I can tip my head without worrying about them falling off. Uh, the ear cups are large, plenty of room for my ears, and um, the weight's distributed real well, and these are actually a very comfortable headphone in my opinion. Um, at 477 grams, they're not light, but they're not exceptionally heavy either for a full-size headphone. So, uh, and the build quality um, is outstanding on these. That's the way it's been with every Kennerton headphone I've ever reviewed. Um, I mean, the wood carving machining is flawless. The pads are very well, um, you know, put together. The stitching, everything. I mean, I've never seen a Kennerton headphone yet that had any kind of issues with build quality. Um, as far as reviewing this, my test equipment. Um, I used three different amps pretty much reviewing this. I used the Audio GD Master 9. I had the um, Head Amp GSX Mini most of the time that I've had reviewing these headphones. And also the Felix Audio Echo, which is an OTL type of tube amp, which normally would not be a good match for a planar magnetic headphone, but because these are so efficient and easy to drive, it's actually a really good match and they sound good with that. Um, I wanted to mention that when I was using the Master 9 and the GSX Mini, these are both balanced amps. And in my opinion, they both sound better from their balanced output, so I did use a balanced cable that I have when using those amps. Not that I think the cable makes a whole lot of difference, but um, I do believe that the sound quality is better out of both of those amps from the balanced output. And I feel that much pretty much about any balanced amp, that if an amp is designed as balanced, it's probably going to sound better from its balanced output because you're using the entire circuitry of the amp. Not, that being said, I don't think that balanced amps really have a sound quality advantage over a well-designed single-ended amp, but if it is balanced, that is the way it's designed, I think you're better off using the balanced output. So I did use a balanced cable when using those amps. I used the stock single-ended uh, cable when I was using the Felix Audio Echo. and. 
Uh, the cable seems to be a very good quality to, me, quality to me and I don't think it, you know, harms the sound at all. Um, I was feeding these amps with um, a Cambridge Audio 540C CD player that I was using as a transport only and I was running a digital signal into the Benchmark Media Deck 1 and then a balanced um, analog signal from there to each of these amps uh, that I did use and a single-ended output to the uh, Benchmark Media. Uh, my music selection was a combination of rock, pop, electronic, um, a lot of acoustical music, especially with female vocals, and a little bit of orchestral music. Um, I did want to mention that this headphone comes stock with the uh, Kennerton ECL01 earpads. Um, I listened to it originally with those earpads, but I did want to compare this um, extensively to the Kennerton Odin and the Kennerton Thror, and I am using ECL02 earpads from Kennerton on both of those so to be fair in my comparison I wanted to I put a pair of ECL 02 ear pads on this headphone also what they do is they basically um, bump up the bass a little bit they probably give about three decibels uh, boost um, or increase to the sub bass and mid bass and to be honest um, the Odin and Thror I think they both sound better with the ECL02 earpads that they give them a little bit more bass and I kind of do with this headphone too. It doesn't seem to make quite as much difference with this headphone but I think all three are improved and um, if you were to buy this headphone and thought it was a little bit short on bass uh, the ECL02 earpads that are available from Kennerton for I think around $80 per pair um, will give it about three decibels of boost in the mid and sub bass so um, if you want a little bit bassier headphone that would be the way to go although I will caution this is not a headphone for bass heads this is a very neutral um, headphone that does not emphasize the bass if you're a bass head or listen to primarily uh, rock or electronic this might not be the best choice this is a very accurate audiophile headphone in my opinion excuse me a second getting into the sound of this headphone um, in my first impressions which I went back and watched a little while ago I mentioned that the I described the tone balance as very neutral but with a slight emphasis in the sub bass. Well, I've kind of changed my mind about that. I still think this is a very neutral headphone, and but I wouldn't say it has an emphasis in the sub bass, but the sub bass extends lower than most headphones do, so it has more sub bass presence in it or to it than most of the headphones. So at first it came across to me as having a little bit of emphasis in the sub bass but now I would just say no it's just very well balanced but goes down lower than most headphones and has more headphone or more sub bass than most of the headphones I've reviewed. Um, probably the only headphone that I've reviewed that goes a little bit lower than this would be the Kennerton Magni which is a closed back and has exceptional sub bass um, um, as far as quality I mean I've heard some headphones that have a lot of sub bass but as far they have more sub bass than the Kennerton Magni but um, but the Kennerton Magni just has very tight very well controlled sub bass and I would say this is a comes in pretty close um, not quite as far as the Magni but that is a closed back headphone anyway um, so yeah, I would describe this as very, very neutral. Um, no emphasis anywhere, really, but you know, just extends well into the sub bass. 
I uh, did want to mention that um, in my review is and this was, most of this was last night I spent about three or four hours comparing this to some other headphones and the headphones I chose to compare it to and the ones I had available were, were the Kennerton Odin and the Kennerton Thror. The Odin is real close to the same price. The Thror is about um, almost a thousand dollars more expensive. That's Kennerton's flagship headphone. And also um, I have the LSA HP1 here which is made by Kennerton for LSA and is kind of based on the Odin but sounds quite a bit different than the Odin to me. So anyway, compared this extensively to those three headphones and more than any to the Thror and I will be honest, um, the Thror has been my reference headphone for quite a while now probably close to a year and a half. Um, I've heard some very good headphones in that time, but I still think the Kennerton Thror, especially with the ECL02 ear pads, has been my favorite. You know, I just enjoy that headphone more than any other. And that was the headphone that I spent a lot of time comparing this to. And they are very similar in sound in a lot of ways. And this headphone holds its own very, very well with the uh, more expensive Thror. And in fact, in a few ways, I've, I actually like it better. So, um, talk about that in a minute. Um, the frequency extension <clears throat> on this headphone, like I said, it has very good extension into the sub bass. And I hear no roll off at all in the treble. This extends very well into the high frequencies. Uh, the bass, <clears throat> I, well, it goes very low for one, but I would describe it as very tight and very controlled. Um, never sounds boomy, never sounds muddy, not at overly emphasized. Uh, the ECL02 ear pads do give a little bit of bass or boost to the mid bass and sub bass, but still never makes it sound muddy or distorted in any way. Uh, the mids are very well balanced. Uh, they're crystal clear and um, very forward. Um, some headphones just have a distant mid-range that everything just sounds like it's kind of off in the far distance and um, this is not that way at all. I mean mid, the mids are very very present on this headphone and don't um, no V-shape, no um, recess, no recess mids on this um, especially vocals, even more so female vocals, are very, very upfront on this headphone. Uh, the treble is well extended and it's very crisp and very clean. Um, some of the best treble I've ever heard. Uh, detail, clarity, and resolution are this headphone's strong point. The detail and clarity on this headphone is absolutely exceptional. It is second to none that I've heard to this day. It is just outstanding. This is possibly the most detailed headphone I have ever heard. It's very close to the Kennerton Thoreau, Um and there's some small differences but um, this is it, I've described the Kennerton Thoreau as my most detailed headphone for quite a while now and this headphone might possibly edge out the Thror slightly in detail. Um, it's real close, uh, very very close. Uh, the imaging is very very precise. I can everything has a distinct location uh, not only you know from side to side but in depth. Um, I can just pinpoint every instrument where it's coming from exactly. Some of the best imaging I've ever heard. The sound stage on this headphone is very large. Um, not only is it very wide, but it has very good depth to it also and very good layering to the sound stage. Um, comparing it to some of the other headphones, um, as far as width, the only headphones I've heard that I think can compare with this and width, this is actually, it has a little bit more width than the Kennerton Thror or the Kennerton Odin. Um, the Hi-Fi Man Aria has exceptionally 
um, an exceptionally wide soundstage and this is right up there with that. I did not get to compare them directly but from memory I would say that this has the width to the soundstage of the area but with more depth. The area might have a little bit more height to the soundstage. Um, the Urza Tisch uh, Phobos which is uh, kind of in the same price range as this also has a huge soundstage uh, with um, depth, height, everything and I would say it's probably the closest in soundstage to this headphone of anything I've heard. Um, but just an outstanding, just really, really large soundstage, very open sounding headphone. Uh, the dynamics on this headphone, um, I still think that in most cases dynamic driver headphones are a little bit more dynamic but this is very dynamic for a planar magnetic driver and um, the dynamics um, they're not so dynamic that they're fatiguing but they're not soft either uh, the Hi-Fi Man Aria comes across as a little bit soft dynamically this has more of a dynamic more punchy sound than the area. Um, it's also very fast um, just this it's just the um, the sound just comes across as it being so fast that it makes it sound more dynamic you know I mean just you know the instruments just the um, you know like drum beats, things like that are just so quick that it does make it sound very dynamic. Um, so I want to get into some comparisons I've done between this and some of the other headphones and I'll start with the Kenerton Odin which is I think a couple hundred dollars cheaper than this and it's a different design. Um, this is for one it's quite a bit lighter than the Odin and I'm comparing this to the 2019 version of the Odin that uses this same type of head strap. So um, the head strap band is actually identical. These are um, quite a bit lighter than the Odin. I think the Odin comes in at, I don't remember, it was the, I think it was uh, 620 grams or maybe it was even heavier than that. So these are quite a bit lighter. The sound is quite a bit different from the Odin. Um, the Odin is definitely a warmer, bassier sound and um, these are more of an analytical, more a little more detail than the Odin. Uh, more of a, a, a kind of a quicker sound and um, just um, like I said, th these would I would consider the Odin more um, a little more musical, a little warmer um, but these are more of an analytical sound, but a good analytical sound. These are just an extremely detailed headphone. These are more detailed than the Odin. Um, comparing this to the LSA HP1, they actually have a uh, similar sound. The, um, a, a lot of people want to know what Kenerton headphone the LSA sounds closest to. And I would actually say that it would be this one closer than the Odin. The LSA is based on the Odin, but it has a um, the Odin once again is uh, warmer and um, uh, more um, more liquid sounding, I guess, than the LSA. And the LSA is closer to this. Um, this does have a couple advantages over the LSA. It does use the same headband and they're pretty close to the same weight. The tone balance is basically pretty close but these um, this does go further into the sub bass than the LSA. These do have more extension on the bottom end and a um, little bit cleaner sound. A um, little, little more refined sounding. The LSA is an exceptional headphone especially for the price um, of I believe $13.99. These are more expensive but it does have a little bit more of a refined sound. Just a little bit cleaner. I notice it mostly in uh, female vocals. So um, I want to compare this to the Thror because that's the headphone that um, has been my favorite for a long time and the one that um, it's closest to. 
And I, um, when I was listening last night doing my comparisons, uh, these five CDs here are the ones that I primarily used when I was comparing the two. And um, I start with this one, uh, Nora Jones' The Fall. And I was listening primarily to um, track six, nine, and eleven, which would be Waiting, um, Back to Manhattan, and December. And listening to Back to Manhattan, um, the Thror did have a little bit more weight to the bass, but it seemed that the uh, Woden actually went a little bit lower into the sub bass. Um, something I noticed though is actually Nora's voice, and she has sort of a unique voice, a little raspy, whatever. It actually sounded slightly more detailed and a little bit cleaner to me on the Woden than it did in the Thror, and that's that's pretty exceptional because, like I said, um, I've never heard a headphone that I thought was could compete or maybe even um, be more a little more detailed than the Thror. So um, I would have to say, um, and I did want to mention this. Um, the Woden has a slightly wider soundstage than the Thror, and where I notice it most is female vocals. Okay, when I listen to female vocals on the Thror, they're kind of coming from like here. They're mostly centered and kind of wrap around a little bit. Okay, when I listen to the same female vocals on the Woden, instead of being like this, they seem more like this. They seem to wrap around my head a little bit, around to the sides a little more. It just sounds larger. And I've noticed that um, on just about any female vocal I've listened to, no matter who it is, there's just a little more, more width, and well, a noticeable amount of additional width to their voices, where the Thror just sounds more focused in the center, and the Woden kind of wraps around me a little bit with the sound. And um, it's kind of, um, I kind of like that. And to tell you the truth, I think with uh, this CD, I think I actually prefer the Woden over the Thror a little bit. Um, another one I was listening to was this is Tori Amos, and the name of this one is American Doll Posse. And this CD is kind of a love hate for me. Uh, the first time I listened to this CD, I hated it. But to tell you the truth, there's still several songs on it that just I don't like at all, but there's some really good songs on this too, and some really um, good reference songs. And a few that I was. Um, used in comparison would be track three, Bouncing Off Clouds, um, track seven, uh, Mr. Badman, track 13, which would be uh, Father's Son, which is an exceptional song, and um, what was it, track 17, I think, um, Beauty of Speed. Anyway, um, same thing. Um, Tori Amos's voice seemed to wrap around me a little bit more with the uh, Woden than the Thror. But um, in all the songs I listened to here, um, probably the best um, to compare that would be um, Beauty with Speed, track 17. Um, it has a pretty solid drum beat, and the Thror just gives it a little bit more weight. It's a little more solid. And as far as Tori's voice, I think I prefer her voice with the Thror. It's a little bit slightly warmer and sounds, has a little more body and a little more weight to it. Where with the uh, Woden, her voice sounds slightly, and we're talking small differences. It took me, you know, quite a few listens to really hear the difference. But um, with the Woden, her voice sounded a little drier. So. Um, I'd have to say, um, and mostly I preferred the Thror on this CD, um, although in Father's Son, the Woden seemed to go a little bit deeper into the sub bass than the Thror did. Um, but like I said, the Thror has a little bit more weight in the mid bass, so it was a toss up and it's very close, but I think I slightly preferred the Thror on this one. 
Another CD um, was Sarah McLaughlin, and this is Fumbling Towards Ecstasy. And um, some of the tracks I used, uh, primarily track two, which would be Wait, track five, Mary, and track eight, which is Ice. And once again, the Sarah's voice sounded, it seemed to wrap around me a little bit more, where it was more center focused with the Thror, the Woden it wrapped around a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but to be honest, like Tori Amos, I thought her voice sounded a little richer and a little um, more liquid through the thrower where it had a slightly dry sound with the um, Woden. I mean, like I said, we're talking very small differences. And, and unless I was comparing the two back and forth directly going from one headphone to the other, I would never notice the difference. I wouldn't pick up on it. You know, if I just sit down and listen to an entire song with one or the other, I almost forget which headphone I have on. So they are very close. But um, once again, uh, the Thror has a little bit more weight to the uh, mid bass, where in the song Track 8 Ice, once again, I did notice that the Odin uh, seemed to go a little bit deeper into the sub bass. So, um, like I said, very close, uh, my choice. Uh, another one I listened to was um, Steely Dan Aja, which is a, from back in the 70s, but most people know this is an exceptionally recorded uh, CD. Um, you know, it's right up there with the best. Anyway, I was listening to the song Peg, and I noticed that um, through most of the song there's a symbol that's in the right channel and I noticed that it just and it was close but it just sounds a little mu bit more predominant with the thrower just a little bit slightly cleaner and um, the not the, necessarily the strike of the symbol but kind of the shimmer afterwards just sounded a little bit more real through the thrower than it did the Woden. But once again, very close, and if I wasn't jumping back and forth between the two headphones, I, w I wouldn't be aware of the difference. Um, the last one I wanted to talk about, and this is the best of Tchaikovsky, and this, I have, this has, um, what does this have on it? Swan Lake and um, Sleeping Beauty and what else? Oh, the Nutcracker. That's the one I wanted to talk about. Track five on this and six, which is from the Nutcracker, and track five is a little overture, and track six is March. And um, this recording, this particular recording of this song, probably has more depth and more layering to the sound stage than any song I have found on any CD so far. This is exceptional for testing out the depth and layering. And um, the the wo or the thrower has up to this point always been the best. No other headphone has been able to compete with the depth and layering of the thrower. And the Woden is actually very close in that respect. Um, real close. But what I did notice that with the Woden, the whole sound stage just sounds a little bit larger than it does with the Thrower. I mean, it's enough to be noticeable. When I would go back and forth from the two, it just sounded like it was just everything was bigger and wider and more separated. Just more distance between each of the instruments and I mean, it was just outstanding. I, I, and both headphones make me feel like I'm right there. But the um, Woden made me feel either like I was a little bit closer, so the sound was more wrapped around me, or maybe I was just in a larger venue where things were spread out more. But um, I've never heard a headphone make that sound so large. It just sounded, everything just sounded bigger even compared to the thrower, which the thrower has always been the best. Um, in track six, the march, there's, um, I don't know what instrument it is, but it goes pretty deep into the bass. 
and the thrower did give it a little bit more weight. So in that respect, I did prefer the thrower. It gave a little more weight to the low frequencies. But um, once again, very close. And to tell you the truth, um, this headphone is up there with the best of the best that I have heard so far. Uh, the thrower has been my favorite overall. Um, some of my other that I really like, <clears throat> once again, the... Um, Urzatish Phobos is one of my favorites. I really like the Hi-Fi Man Aria. Um, I've reviewed three of the Spirit Torino headphones, which I really like, but um, they're a little more bass heavy. Um, you know, not as accurate, but you know, they've got the bass. I per actually prefer them with a little bit of EQ. Um, the Mesa Empyrean. Uh, it's a fantastic headphone. The build quality is exceptional, but it doesn't have near the detail of this headphone. So, um, you know, and I've listened to quite a few, you know, I think I figured out a few days ago, you know, and it depends where you, what, where your cutoff is of what you consider high end. But, you know, I kind of consider high end anything, you know, getting up like $700 or more is kind of getting into high end. Some people would still consider that mid fi But I think I've, you know, now listened to about maybe 14, 15 headphones that I would consider high end. And this is definitely up, as far as I'm concerned, with the best of the best. This is possibly the most detailed headphone I have ever heard. It's very close in detail to the Thror. The Thror is able to sound slightly um, warmer and a little more liquid than this headphone um, without sacrificing any detail. This headphone I would consider a little more analytical than the Thror, but once again, it's a very good analytical. It is not fatiguing because it's so clean and it never gets harsh. I've never heard anything, treble, mid-range, anything ever sound harsh out of this. A lot of instruments that can sound harsh on lesser headphones are just crystal clean on this. So, um, you know, you would think that, you know, being so detailed, it could be fatiguing, but it's just so clean that it isn't. Uh, the one flaw that this headphone does have is by being so detailed, it will very quickly reveal, you know, a less than perfect recording. If you're listening to a recording with any, you know, background hiss in it or anything like that, this headphone will definitely reveal it. Um, if there's any distortion in the recording, this headphone will reveal it. Um, on this album here, Sarah McLaughlin stumbling towards ecstasy. In my opinion, um, the song, the second track, Wait. Um, and also, what is it? It'll be about 10, 11, 12, track 12. I think it's called Fear. Both of those, those songs, in my opinion, Sarah McLaughlin, and don't get me wrong, she has a beautiful voice. But in my opinion, I think they oversaturated the recording a little bit with her voice. It's recorded a little bit too high of level. And with really good headphones, well, even some lesser headphones, but detailed headphones, I hear a little breakup in her voice on some notes. Um, especially not at the beginning of either of the songs, but further into both of them. And, um, you know, any head revealing headphone will reveal that. And point that out but um, I really noticed it on the Woden even more so, so than the Thrower where her voice breaks up a little bit so this isn't a headphone that you're going to want to you know pull out every recording you're gonna want to listen to your best you know music with this so that would be its only weakness I really see other than that it's comfortable it's beautiful to look at um, it's extremely detailing detailed extremely clean not a bass head headphone. Um, if you're a bass head, and you know, it's got very good bass, but it's balanced neutral bass. It's very clean, it's very tight. But if you're looking for a heavy emphasis in the bass, this isn't the headphone for you. Um, you know, like I said, changing over to the ECL02 ear pads, it does um, 
you know, add a little bit of bass, about three decibels, without harming the sound at all. And I would suggest that over EQ. Um, in my experience, planar magnetic headphones don't tend to EQ real well. They, especially trying to add bass to them, it just doesn't seem to have the same effect it does with dynamic drivers. It, um, dynamic drivers, you boost the bass a little bit, you really notice it. With most planar magnetic headphones, when you try boosting the bass, it doesn't have as much effect and it can kind of loosen up and muddy the bass a little bit. So if you want a little more bass out of this, I'd suggest the ear pad swap. But anyway, um, do I recommend this headphone? Yes, I know twenty four seventy nine is not, um, you know, that's an expensive headphone, but this is up there with the best of the best and one of the most detailed, cleanest sounding headphones I've ever heard. And I mean, it's just, this is an exceptional headphone. I really, really like it. So yes, I recommend it highly. Um, wow, this is getting long, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you are all welcome to join us at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. We are growing very fast lately. I think we've added over 150 members in the last week, and we are now up to almost 8,200 members. So uh, check it out. Um, thank you very much for watching my video.